Wade yet, Coach? Wow. <laughs> I told the guys in the, in the locker room, I said, I felt like the late, great Jack Buck. I don't believe what I just saw. <laughs> We're here outside of McHale Center where really no one believes what just happened tonight. It was the most improbable comeback in years for the Wildcats. And for the thousands of fans that left early, well, they anticipated a double-digit loss, a season-crippling loss that really would have put the Wildcats' NCAA tournament hopes in jeopardy. However, it came down to fouling. It paid off for the Wildcats. They were down by 10 points with 52 seconds remaining. They made their, their shots offensively. Houston missed their free throws, and they cut the gap down to three. Nick Wise, with 10 seconds left, pulled up, game-tying three-pointer, and that sent the game to overtime, and ultimately, there was no way that the Houston Cougars were going to come back from that momentum swing. Um, you know, when everybody thought, you know, we lost the game, we just kept on fighting. Um, you know, we hit some incredible shots on the stretch. We got into them on defense, they missed some free throws and just gave us a chance and we were able to just get back in the game that way. Although the last 10 seconds is where the Wildcats primarily made their improbable comeback, really the turning point came midway through the second half in regulation where Chase Buttinger was stomped on by Houston's Aubrey Coleman. That was the flagrant foul that really set things in the direction for the Wildcats. While the officials discussed Coleman's ejection on the replay monitors, a tense McHale Center really anticipated that this would be the comeback that the Wildcats needed. It would be the turning point of the game, maybe even the season. Who knows at this point? You know, I, I, I saw the charge, and then I, I saw, I turned to the bench. I don't know if I was getting ready to put someone in, and then I heard the crowd, and when I look back, all I see is Chase jump up. And, um, but he has a, you probably saw, he's got a big, tennis shoe mark on his chest uh, where and I, I'll, I'll obviously watch it here in a little bit and see what happened exactly but the refs were right on top of it threw the guy out and then their explanation to me on chase was that when he jumped up you know he pushed uh, the guy in front of him and I said yeah I tend to push someone if they stomp me on the chest too. It must have been karma that Jamel Horn was the one holding the ball at the end of regulation with this game going into overtime. After all, this is the same guy that committed two fouls earlier this season that prevented the Wildcats from even having an opportunity to play an extra five minutes. Horn went into the locker room after the game and told his teammates, hey guys, at least I didn't foul. Reporting from Tucson at McHale Center, I'm Brian Roy for the DailyWildcat.com.